here's the here's the important piece. How is it? How is AEDP actually done? I mean, which reflects what you saw early on in a seven-minute clip. Now here's a. I mean, when Diana comes or Diana presents her work, you know, she has a whole bunch of of, of um, I would say points. But it kind of, after working for seven or eight years in this work, I try and narrow it down, especially in an AEDP seminar. How do you actually really present AEDP, how it's actually done in a single slide? <laughs> so, how it's actually procedurally done? Ha ha. Here it is. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Which is in my paper. Uh, that you know, I had the uh, you know privilege to it was in a, a journal Transformance. It's actually very packed, <laughs> okay? Because the idea is to cat you, you, us being the therapist, we're there to catalyze, and I, I'm choosing what catalyze because it's supposed to be faster than usual, okay? And we're, we're there to catalyze a psychobiological state transformation, okay? And um, psychobiological because it has both, we can observe both in the session that the patient is showing certain configurations of affect, behaviors, perhaps thoughts, or sometimes they might report somatic sensations. Or some ideas. I mean, the configuration that I use is uh, what we call the acronym BASIC, B-A-S-I-C, behavioral impulse, affect, somatic sensation, imagery, visual imagery, and cognitions in terms, in terms of thoughts. It's easier to remember. I mean, it's uh, otherwise, I can't remember them all. It's easier to remember acronyms. So it has to be a state transformation because you can actually watch if you pay... Uh, in earlier in the uh, the seven minute clip, you can actually see the client or the patient was showing from a sense she talked about the, the the ball of tightness that is in her chest to later on there's a sense of relief after I use an attachment intervention and so we 're there to catalyze a psychobiological state transformation. well, how is it actually done so this is the goal. Okay, so this is the goal of each session, but how is it done? Is it through the moment-to-moment -moment reading? Oh, when I first learned ADP, or before I learned, first learned ADP, it's kind of like I work with a client, and then I make some observations, and in the end, I would deliver some interventions and some feedback after 45 minutes. Well, that's not actually how it happens in ADP because it has to be a moment-to-moment -moment reading. It could be as short as three seconds. It could be as short as two minutes. So, so it has to be a moment-to-moment -moment reading, uh, meaning observing what the patient is showing. And here's that little keyword, optimal response. Yeah, what is the optimal re response? And uh, here's where I would love to perhaps later on in the uh, DVD showing that I would do uh, the triangles right on the whiteboard to, sh to tell you what exactly with each moment to moment that I, would be able, I should be able to see perhaps the patient showing a defense or maybe a patient showing anxiety or a patient it may be showing a core affect at that moment and then I would have to respond accordingly based on what I could observe at that moment. Well, if I'm really energetic and very mindful that day, I could be really cool and observe all three of the corners. But if I'm kind of tired, that depends on what catch my eye on that day. So uh, to be able to read what patient may be showing. And, and then I need to respond to them. But, and the key thing is to respond to the patient's core somatic affective experience. It has to be core or in a sense of in the emotions literature, it has to be categorical emotions because when process to completion, it's not the vehement uh, uh, emotions in, in trauma, it's the core emotions. When process to completion, it leads to a self-writing experience. Hence, and also it has to be felt in the body. Hence, somatic 
affective experience. Well, how is it usually done? It has to be dialectically regulated. Well, what does that actually mean? It means that me being the attachment figure has to be mindful of what my internal experience at that time, watching the client's internal, their internal experience, and hopefully that on the best of days that I would be able to regulate it, not to, to go beyond their window of tolerance, but more so, and, and the window of tolerance for each particular patient is different. So therefore, it has to, and, or even it's given the same patient, it could be different for each different session. So simply, I need to watch for that. And there are signs and signals where a patient may be going beyond the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the threshold of tolerability, or maybe it's not up enough. So it's, we, I have to downregulate it. If it's, if it's, I need to downregulate the fence. I need to downregulate anxiety, and I need to upregulate uh, core uh, emotional experience. But again, those will be each of those uh, elements have its their own signs. Again, this needs to be worked through to completion with meta processing. Meta processing is a unique feature of uh, ADP, whereby after the patient has gone through a transformative experience uh, that we ask them to go back and look at it um, and, and then at the same time to have another round of experience. And then with autobiographical reconstruction, well, how does that happen? Because when we, real, when we notice that patient arriving at, uh, arrives at core state, of which I will show later on in the four state, three state transformation, patient is are remarkably able to redo their sense of life story, but this time in a different perspective, and this time in a much more adaptive response. It's quite amazing. Of course, in the here and now, because it has to be done in a session. And with the emotionally engaged presence of an attachment-based therapist. Um, and this thing, uh, I, I try to tell my patients, uh, sometimes that I reassure them, look, when, uh, if you cry, if you, you know, are sobbing, if you are shedding tears, I promise that the only promise that I will give you is that I will not cry louder than you are. Um, but I can promise that I will not show tears. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised how, you know, many of them are very moved uh, to see, in fact, the therapist are feeling their feelings together with them. Okay, so, well, but that's quite still, in my opinion, still too much for a single slide. <laughs> After seven years? <laughs> okay. <laughs> in short. All right, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, anyways, it's moment and moment reading, to moment reading the optimal response of patient core somatic affective experience now. Just remember this. So, and hopefully it will work. <laughs> well, let's unpack it a little more. Okay, yeah. Here is what we're trying to read and respond to. What are we reading? Because there are two versions of a triangle of conflict, which is the universal tri I mean, we, we're thankful to uh, David Mallon, who uh, has developed the universal, you know, tri uh, the triangles for u universal triangles for psychodynamic therapy. Okay, there's self at best functioning and self at worst functioning. Okay, Let, let's see. What happens is that in, when each session, patient can, comes in and tell you all kinds of stories, okay? And usually you may be able to sense, wow, this kind of seems like watching a movie, uh, hearing a story. It's, there is some emotionally stimulating event. Well, what happens is that inevitably, it will trigger anxiety in the client or the patient. And yet there's a barrier to emotional experience 
because it triggers anxiety and immediately they go into a, form, uh, into a defense, whether it's a tactical defense or a character defense. Well, what are the tactical defense or character defense? Um, you know, I hope in the future and when you attend ADP uh, workshops or further training, it will be unpacked for you, but just in case I am told um, that included in your package should be my yours truly uh, ADP worksheet, which gives you, uh, uh, I call it my cheat sheet, uh, because it gives you what the tactical defenses are, at least the most common tactical defenses are, and the most uh, common character defenses. There are repressive ones and there are regressive ones. So the idea of reading it is hopefully to be able to read what the patient are showing at that time, the defenses. Now I could res decide to respond with, to, with the defenses or I may not. And because the emotionally stimulating event, it shows that it will trigger anxiety, perhaps because it reminds them of a particular experience. Anxiety has been conceptualized as really small doses of emotional pain, small doses of shame, and small doses of fear with one function, that is to inhibit the core emotional experience. Okay? So, the anxiety, whether it's shame, fear, or emotional pain, it has one single function, is to inhibit that of core emotional experience. So again, I need to, sh and there are signs uh, in which a patient may be showing certain forms of anxiety, whether it's discharged in the voluntary muscle, whether it's a discharge in the involuntary muscle or cognitive disruption. Again, if the patient is showing, all, you know, showing that, again, I'm reading it, and I may or may not choose to respond to that. Okay. And unfortunately, what patients are living most of the time is emotional stimulating event. They go into anxiety, which lives chronic reliance of the defenses. What happens is that they have no access to their internal emotional experience and all of the core affective phenomena, it leads to pathogenic affects, further shame, and in the end, an unbearable state of aloneness. So, this is what patient usually comes in with, and what we're trying to do with them, and there are interventions to do, different interventions, is to lead them to this functioning. Same emotional stimulating event, we're trying to lead with a corrective emotional experience, so maybe the patient is re-describing. Uh, say, in the client that you saw earlier, that she described that there's a sense of tightness in her stomach, and we um, have no, perhaps at that point, that we have no idea what she was the, what the event was, but nevertheless she was showing the sense of anxiety as, ex as experienced in the stomach. So what did I do? Okay. What I did was try to use an attachment intervention specific. The implicit use will be myself. As you can hear, perhaps I'm slowing down. I use a softer tone of voice, um, which tends to activate the parasympathetic nervous system and uh, downregulating her anxiety. And so that would be the implicit use of myself. And at the same time, drawing her uh, attention to an internalized attachment figure. Because in AEDP, how we conceptualize it is why people would have to rely on defenses is because of an insecure attachment or the caring other or the loving other that should have been caring, that should have been able to have done the reading and the optimal response where they f failed them. They did not respond optimally. Hence, they have to rely on defenses. And as such, in intercession, I need to repair that by providing them with the new attachment experience. Hopefully it is a secure attachment experience, again, to help them to, uh, so that they could have access once more to the core affective experiences. In her case, not only implicitly using myself and explicitly inviting her to sense the presence of her loving husband, uh, who, uh, and of which 
once she felt it in her body, she was able to access that, use that effectively, and downregulate her anxiety. And not only that, probably helped her to process through what she needed to process through. Okay. And in this case, in ADP, if we are able to create that secure attachment, secure environment for them, the core effect of phenomena would lead to uh, the sense of ad adaptive action tendencies or the transformative, uh, the affects of transformation such as mastery, such as grief of the self, such as uh, the sense of awe, again included in my worksheet, and it leads to a sense of core state. Well, these are the triangles that I keep in mind always as I work with my clients. And here's the other um, unique contribution of ADP, whereby we explicitly articulate the transformative processes probably in most, I would say, experiential work, whether it's EMDR, whether it's somatic experiencing, whether it's focusing, um, or other kind of modalities, they probably go through the same four states without necessarily articulating it. Us ADPers happen to articulate it explicitly. In state one, remember, this psychobiological state transformation that my formula was making reference to, and each psychobiological state is easy to remember, is characterized by the configurations of behavioral impulses that the patient may be showing, affects, somatic sensations, imagery or cognitions that may be shown by the patient at each particular moment. There will be stress, distress, and symptoms. These are the DSM-4 diagnosis. And the idea through our um, through our moment-to-moment -moment reading and optimal response of their needs, then it will lead to what we call the first state transformation, co-creating safety which lead, leads to state two, the processing of core affective experiences. Well, you see, the brain is actually, uh, I've shared with my uh, students in Hong Kong, the, the brain is as much a digestive organ as the stomach. Right? Okay. It is actually digesting information and energy that is coming towards us and to be and, and what we're hoping to do is to able to assimilate all of those information from the outside and to put it into adaptive use. That's what my conceptualizing uh, my conceptualization of the brain. And the processing is actually that digestive experiences of the brain. And um, uh, it will be unpacked further later on. And after state two, there will be state three. The interesting thing, the hardest work, kind of work that is done is usually around the top from state one to state two. Once you're kind of in state two, showing each, again, their unique con configurations of BASIC, whatever it is, it's just kind of do things on its own. It's uh, another way of, of uh, and I'm sure you may have used the same metaphor, it is like childbirth. Right? Um, and us AED peers are midwives or obstetricians. Um, and the hard work is actually engaging the baby uh, and starting the labor process. Once the labor process starts, unless it's stuck somewhere, the obstetrician, you know, or the midwife does it, okay, it's just doing a humming and a hawing and, of course, rooting them on because it's ultimately the hard work of the, um, the pregnant mom delivering. It always, the, the baby always comes out unless it's stuck, okay? And most of the time, it's not stuck. It's only we need to do stuff when, when it's stuck. So, uh, and then afterwards, once the uh, baby is out, or and there will be markers which show there's the, com the 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 patient would actually show you, like earlier on, when my client was showing, there's a sense of calm. You kind of know that the processing is done. She will tell you there's this peace and calm, always the same markers, and um, 
So you, you kind of know it's done, and then you do meta-processing, which means asking them to reflect back as you, as you look back and on the experience earlier, what it's like for you, and which is the, a unique contribution of AEDP, and I've not seen in any other therapeutic traditions or models, because we believe by processing it, by drawing their attention further, asking them to feel it, uh, to experience it, to make it experiential, that it will further um, activate further rounds of transformation. And then in the end, it arrives at the core state, which is in this place where it joins with um, a lot of wisdom traditions, whereby there's a sense of wisdom, there's peace, there's tranquility, there's clarity, it's quite amazing. 